This is the official beginning of the 8th uh, Kids Knowledge Seekers Workshop put on by the Keshe Foundation. And um, I'm one of the hosts, Rick Cramond, and uh, Kevin Devaney is the other uh, co-host on this show. And we'll be speaking with Mr. Keshe uh, at the Spaceship Institute. And he will be giving us uh, uh, advice on uh, how to become... Uh, uh, a better child, you might say, a better um, uh, person that knows more about the universe in terms of plasma. Okay, so uh, Kevin, is there something you'd like to say before we uh, uh, begin the the uh, talk with Mr. Kesh? It's just funny that you mentioned, um, you know, kids in space, what they would do just previously. Um, it's just that I have, I've been thinking since yesterday, if I had that level of knowledge and understanding um, as Mr. Kesh, how easy or difficult would it be to to build the first prototype of a, of a spaceship um, with, that, with that level of understanding of yours? Is it m more difficult or easier than I would imagine or any other kid would imagine? Depends on your imagination. Good day. Hello, children. <laughs> there was a program called Hello, Children. Um, uh, wherever you are, I hope you enjoy this uh, session. But uh, in so many ways, uh, you don't need much imagination. One of the main things which man in the space will come to understand, especially the children of the space program, a spaceship program, is that as human beings in the space, we will move a lot away a lot from tangibility of matter. What does this mean? It means we're going to rely more on fields and what is about the process of the generation of entities in the universe. What is important in so many ways for the children or even for adults? is to understand in this space, I was talking about this with, um, recently past day or two, what are we going to do in the space with all the time we have? There are no shopping centers, and there are no cinemas, and there are no arcades. Mm, possibly there is something called uh, space uh, programs or games which you can play, but what the destiny is for man is not, as we know, a day trip to moon or a day trip to, to Mars. Is sustaining life in the space for thousands of years. How are we going to spend our time? Before we start uh, the program, Rick said, can you explain to children how do they go to school? What food they eat? What would they play with? How do they get their energy? It's very simple. The way the children have adopted and changed in past 20 years, with the computer games and more advanced electronics, children will grow into the new, the new style of living. Children will have a different value than the present children. At the moment, as I always say, the minute we say to our children to do something, they say, what's in it for me? What am I going to get? And if you remember a very old song, the boy, mother said, can you clean up your room? And then he came back, he says, for putting my shoes away, one dollar, for putting, cleaning up my bed, two dollars, and he had a dub at the end of it, it was something like twelve dollars. And the mother at the end said, bringing you up, free of charge, no charge. Breastfeeding you for so long, no charge. And she went through everything he's done, staying awake and looking after him and says, at the bottom, for the love of, my love for you, no charge. So, in the space is a no charge game. In the space you don't receive financial rewards. You receive how you can help, how you can serve, how you can go out to be able to serve, to assist, and to be there as part of, not just with the people you are, 
but with other people, with other creatures of the universe. The style of life which my youngest son and even my grandchildren will have, or you as youngsters will have, will be totally different than uh, what we have, even what you have, or what you see up to now. How you play games will not be so physicality. You do some tennis or whatever you like to do when the spaces allows you to, where it's accommodated. But the standard, the expectation of life will change. The games you play will change. The habits will change. In a way, you cannot go outside and play in the garden because you're going at such a high speed. If you go out, God knows where the plane is by the time you want to come back in. On this planet, what is the new the development in the plasma technology will bring is enormous. We see it with, I've seen, uh, I can see what is going to come. The games are totally will change beyond imagination even in the next three to five years using this new technology. The reason for it being, not it gives us new, what you call, tools to play, but it makes energy available in a way which we are not used to. Positioning which we are not used to. If you go on the live stream of the Keshe Foundation now, we have set out to show for the first time in man's um, culture of science, that you can burn no fuel, and you don't need to damage anything, but you can find new position. If you go on a live stream, and have a look what is actually downstairs below us, going on with the system, if you understand the potential of what that little thing which is rolling downstairs does, what it's going to do to your life. You don't need imagination. Skateboards which never touch the ground. Bicycles with no wheels. You can play surfing with, with no water. The game, the totality has changed. And in the coming time, as um, maybe your parents tell you, more and more scientists and manufacturers are coming together. In the coming months and weeks, you will see totally new expansion into the knowledge of science of man, in, even which affects you. You can go with your laptops, you can go with your, um, what you call, PlayStation 3. Never worry if you're going to run out of charge. Where is the next battery comes? Do I need to recharge my game? There's the changes will affect you beyond even your imagination. But, as you always do, youngsters, you just grow into it naturally, as it has been there all the time that way. If you ask your grandfathers, they used to go to school, if they went to a school, on the back of a donkey, or a horse, or walk to school. Cars were real things. In two generations, man history has changed, and now the man will, history will change totally with the new technology. A lot of things you hear about wars and killing would not exist. There will be no weapons for you to kill and to be killed by. Today, if you live and you listen as youngsters or teenagers, there is riots going on all over the United States. For a policeman shooting a youngster at the age of 15, 16. There will be no gun for a child to be killed by. Man will come to understand that the fighting and greed has come to an end, because you can have whatever you need at the time you need. Your lifestyle will be different than ours. You do not need to worry if you go to bed hungry tonight or tomorrow, would there be a food that you have enough energy to go to school?
the food will be available to every child on this planet in a free way. I think we have seen this in a very crude way this Monday with our Chinese um, agriculture guys. A lot of people did not understand what it entailed. But us, as people who sit outside and understand the technology, if you go and look at the Chinese workshop of Monday, <coughs> It means man has become independent, not of the land, but independent that he can grow anything on this planet, even in the driest part of the world. So there will be no hunger. You don't need to pay to go hungry. Food will not be a luxury. Food will be part of the principle, essential, that is available at any point for anyone. At the moment, estimated by United Nations, up to one-third of the children plus on this planet go to sleep hungry, not knowing if there is a food tomorrow. If they have enough energy to go to school, or if you've been with me or you've seen, in the past two years, three years, when I was in the university in Africa, students in the upper teenagers, 17, 18 or 20 in the university, fall asleep while the lectures are teaching, because they haven't had any food for two or three days, they can't afford it. These all will come to a pass, and it has come to the pass, it's just how, as Cash Foundation, will change the scene in the coming weeks and days. We have started seeing a number of manufacturers, a number of countries, coming in to hand, give a hand unconditionally, to make this coming true, because now the tools are there, and now we deliver systems that can deliver what it is. No child will go to sleep in a dark room with no lights. This is one of the parts of what we call 2015-2016 roadmap of the Cash Foundation. We will release it like last year we did, what we're going to do in 2014. So, what you're going to play, is unlimited game, with enough energy, without the hunger. You will be the first generations, who do not have to work at the age of 8 or 10, like your great-grandfathers, if you were in Europe, in mills and mines, just to be able to live. If you look, go back and look at the history of Britain, go and look at the place called Manchester, or Oldham. As long as their father was alive and wasn't dead, the children had a roof because the factory will give them a house, what they call two up, two down. Two rooms for the children and parents to live, cook, and when the father died, children were on the street, hungry. We come a long way. These houses still exist, and you can go and see them. Thousands of them. In your generation, there will be no worries where the food comes. And the only thing is, the only point of change comes, how fast we can get the people who make these games for you, instead of making shooting games and killing games, into the games, how you serve and how you can be useful to your society and enjoy it. Because that's what you're going to do in this space. This is not a dream anymore. This is the reality which is coming so fast, that even the governments try to deny it, because they don't know how to handle it. We have started putting what is known as the CO2 kit, which means you can start making the essential energy base for your energy for your toys, for your food. And I already start getting telephone calls from people, when is the energy kit will be out, we want to buy, now we start making CO2 GANs. And very soon after that, how can we fly, how can we go there, how we can we do that? Do you need to go to school? In the future, there will be no pens and no papers, because we can't take papers into a space. 
unless we carry another spaceship full of trees behind us. Electronics has become a thing of a past, if you understand the new technology. You be thought through direct communication. And you take what you need, when you need, and the knowledge you need, at the point you need. The schools, the way you go to school, and you have to write and sit and be shouted and insulted by another adult to say, I'm much cleverer than you, is over. It's just a matter of time. The way we use our health section to reach the emotion and understanding of the brain, to change a disease, it will become a common way to teach you any language or any science you are interested in. These are not uh, dreams, these are what we are working on and what we have and what we see, the new technologies is going to bring for you. How far you're going to go, it depends on you. And how far a man is prepared to ch change, it depends on your generation, because our generation has already done its job. We have managed to destroy as much as we could in the past 50 years. We bombed each other with nuclear, we killed each other with chemical weapons, we slaughtered each other for more money in the bank, and in space there are no banks, there are no nuclear, there are no chemical weapons. You are born or you grow up in the most beautiful time for a human race. Most probably by early next year, in the first quarter or first half of next year, the first toys developed through this technology will be available to you. A football which never lands. We already seen the effect of it, we are playing with the whole concept of positioning. The game will be totally different. If you are not afraid of height, then you can start playing new games that you never get hit either. If you look, if you look at the 19, late 1990s Olympic, where the guy had a backpack, flying, and he had few seconds to land, if he had landed one second, two seconds later, he would have crashed. Now you can do that on the backpack as much as you like, whenever you like. Because you don't burn fuel, you position yourself. Seeing children with all sorts of disabilities, will be a thing of a past. Because now the knowledge is there, for every man to have a full physical development. This is what we are building. So, the change will be so rapid in the next five years, that even, we'll say, how full we've been, what we call as a four-wheelers. You know, the man in the space is known as a four-wheelers. Because the only thing we done, we change the donkey for the four wheels and we call it a car. Nowhere in the universe anybody uses such a technology backwards. If you've seen wheels on the moon, running around in the space, or a backpack, then you need the backpack and wheels to, to be able to move. Now we have the knowledge, we have the technology, and you'll be benefited by it. Handicap, mental disorder, mentally handicapped children, will be a thing of a past in the coming years. Because now we have enough knowledge to be able to change the position and growth of the brain. We are running research and it's been 100% positive. It's one of the most positive research we have ever done, from return of the results. A child should not suffer, and to be on a wheelchair, where there is a possibility and the knowledge to do so. And the knowledge is there, it's just expanding it, that you can touch every type of deformity and lack of growth of the part of the body of the man. 
the future for your generations, if you are two, three, five or ten years, is beautiful. The only one who can destroy it is you, and nobody else. You will not be able to go and play football in the space, but you play a different game of football in the space. You spend more time creating peace and supporting other cultures and races than you can ever imagine. This is not a dream, this is a reality. And if you can hear very, very carefully, you should hear a buzzing noise. It's just like a fly flying in the background. These are the motors of the system which can and are developing and we shown be able to reduce weight and gain weight. Now we change it to positioning, and now we are building the plasma to reach that position of movement, motion, without burning the fuel. If you get a chance tomorrow, we might be able to show you the system outside in the lab, what is running. Now, let's come back to Earth. A lot of your children suffer with something is known as a lice, a little animal in your hair which you pick up in the school. And a lot of you use all sorts of chemicals to have the freedom not to have these little guests in your hair. You have to understand how these become the guests in your hair. It's a simple space technology. The field within your hair, due to an emotion, or change of condition in your hair, creates a condition, an environment, when the little guests come in. They always live with you, they're always in your pillow, in your mattress, and everywhere else you play. But, in your hair, you don't make home for them. It's like you put a little sweet, waiting for the mouse to come and catch it. Or putting little cheese for the mouse to come and catch it. But this time, you don't see the food you put out. When you are emotionally disturbed, when you are emotionally get disturbed in a school, that's why we see most of these diseases in the schools. Because the teacher creates a condition by shouting, howling, or friends, that changes the environment within your emotional part of the brain, and this in itself creates a condition within your the skull, which is like a reactor we run, that materials released or converted in your hair that become a feeding ground. You just open a nursery, so they come for feed. Or, with a new style of life, you see power parents changing shampoos from one day to another. And this change of shampoos, of washing hair, or going to swimming pool every day, changes the acidity and the condition of the environment of the hair. So, now you put the food, you wait for the bird to come in. If you have such a condition, and you are forever with a comb, and with uh, what I call little chemicals trying to kill it, it's a very, very easy way to do it. The recipe is one, one spoon no. Mr. Cash, your beer... Washing beer. up liquid. Sorry, your... One uh, spoon of lemon juice, and Mr. one Cash. spoon of vinegar. Mr. Cash, we lost that whole last sentence, it uh, broke up Yes, there. I can hear you. Uh, we, we lost your uh, secret formula. We lost the oh, secret oh. formula. It didn't come through it's somehow. It's not a secret formula. <laughs> it's not a secret formula. This is what we have used for years. This is what I developed in so many ways, and some people know about it. Okay, could you repeat it? Because we lost yeah. it totally here. You need, you need equal measure of three products, like a spoon of washing up liquid, what you wash your plates with, you need a spoon of lemon, and a spoon of vinegar. You mix them very fine, and you just brush your hair with it. In the morning, in lunch time, and dinner time. 
and maximum within three days, they should not come back again. Because the lemon juice brings the amino acid condition of the hair, the skull, to a balanced level. The vinegar, due to its property, disassembles, literally disintegrates these little animals, even their eggs. And the washing up liquid, just slide them off, it's like being on a slide in the, in the swimming pool. And the three together, create a condition that does not allow, and the brain or the skull learns how to handle. Once you do this, it will be very, very seldom, if you see it lies back in. And this is one of the biggest problem, it doesn't cost much. It's less than one cent, two cents, or whatever you like to call it. But you just comb your hair, and you don't wash your hair, just leave it, it doesn't show. And you don't smell of vinegar, you don't smell of lemon. You most probably smell of a beautiful washing up liquid. But, do it three times in one day, maybe by second day or third day, you don't need it anymore. These are the psychological pressures, which adults put on the children, for them to confirm they exist. This is another kind of abuse, and when the child cannot handle, the fields from the emotional part, creates the environment, like the atmosphere of the earth around the skull, which changes the condition for living, and production of materials, which is essential for the skin to be lubricant, to in a condition of sugar, that invites animals to come in. So, what you do, you change the condition, permanently. Any question? From the big children. We can go home now. I think we, we sang them a lot, why they went to sleep. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kesh. Um, um, I'd, I'd like to try to um, talk a little more about this kids in space theme. Um, um, for example, um, we talked about getting um, energy from food and possibly in the future people will have less emphasis on, um, um, I guess, enjoying food and having food more for energy purposes rather than for enjoyment purposes. Is that, do you think that's true? And if so, is that kind of a, that might be kind of a scary thought for kids and for most adults to, to have to give up the, uh, the um, enjoyment of certain kinds of foods like sweets, for example, or, or, you know, certain other foods that stimulate us and so on. Is that so, something you think might be phased out or, or altered in our uh, attitudes in the future? There is a... There is a school of thoughts. Not the school of thought, this is a way a lot of things are done in a space. We have a condition, what we call, erasing the memory. In most of the deep space conditions, memories are put on fro a frozen condition. What it means, you will not remember anything about Earth. Once you enter the deep state, deep uh, space travels, is no use creating a condition, going back to where, most probably doesn't exist anymore. So, what comes, is what energy you will receive, to be able to live. To be able to, have a life anywhere in the universe. Uh, food, what we call bananas, or what we call uh, hamburgers, or cheeseburgers, or uh, pizzas, they stimulate, in a way, sense of smell, sense of belonging, and good memories, or bad memories, but at the same time, they deliver their energy. 
or they deliver the gravitational magnetic fields. So, as our knowledge has expanded beyond the present understanding of physics and science, we can gimmick, imitate and make the smell of any food you like, give you the feeling that you chew the same food, you eat the same food, you smell it, you taste it, and in fact you have never eaten it. But that way, for you is comfort that you receive the energy from it. You got to understand that, for example, you have a carbon, what do you write your pencil with? When you change its structure, to a crystal structure, becomes a diamond, which Mama wears on the ring. It's the same material, in different conformation. The same thing is with a gas. If you make a gas from its one state, to a diamond state, then it becomes odor, a smell. Now, how much you squeeze this odor, this structure gives you a taste and a smell from sugar to salt and vinegar or banana. Very much, as we say in the plasma, you see the, uh, the white plasma, we call it the CO2 as a gas, or the same plasma in different color behaves like copper or can behave like iron. The knowledge is now available to be able to do this. You can make a gas to smell and have an odor of anything you like. So you smell as you're eating banana. At the same time, we can create the taste condition in the water of your mouth that you feel you're chewing banana. Food, the way we see it, carrying a beef and a steak and chicken nuggets in deep space for thousands of years is over. But, you still can have that texture and memory. Okay. Sorry about this. We still got things going in the background. So, um, the food, you if, if... But the thing is, you won't even remember banana. These will be pictures on the memories on the walls. There are much more interesting foods in this space. A lot of people say, what's the purpose of us going to space? The way man has been here to be help to move out of this planet, due to what is to come to happen, you become pioneers to help the others who are in the same position, but you still first have to learn everything has to be peaceful. In a way, what gives you refuge, you become the ones who give others refuge, how to survive in the space. This is not unique to this planet. It happens on a regular basis around the universe. So, that's why we say, when the time comes to space, those who are clear to serve, they'll find their way into the space because the servitude comes when you have everything and you go out like, like an earthquake zone, you go to help, irrespective of you have a nice warm house and everything else. You put your backpack on and you go and help somebody who's in disaster condition. We are doing that with the human being now, and in time the humans which come into a space will do the same to rescue others. This is the philosophy and this is the ethos of the universe. So, you won't even remember banana, because by the time your child is born, banana doesn't even exist in deep space. Most probably there is no earth for you to go back to, either, because you're so far away. You become children of a space, a new home, a new land. 
This is the reality, it happens every day of the moment you live. You have earthquakes, people lose their home, and they have to start a new thing. We had Fukushima, a reactor blown up, all the children lost their schools, the home is there, but they cannot go to it anymore. This is the same stage, but in a bigger scale in respect to man on this planet. Any other question? The future is very bright, it's just you who have to change the mentality of playing war games, to playing love and care games. As I was saying to somebody recently, I give you so much love, that you can't handle it. You don't need to hate, you don't need to fight. There is something as children you got to learn. When you have to fight for something, you already have lost. If you understand that meaning. Any other question? Um, thank you, Mr. Kesh. Uh, I'd like to um, um, follow up on this idea of games for kids and games that will be uh, realizing the vision of peace rather than the vision of, uh, of conflict. And um, maybe we can f sort of focus on that for the next session next week. Uh, we can prepare. I've got a couple of games that I made I'd like to show and uh, as an example of a different kind of game where you win by uh, not shooting things, by not killing. And instead of uh, getting points for killing, you get points for not killing. <laughs> so uh, I don't think, I think one thing which is wrong in the vocabulary of man is the word killing. The, the, the thing is, what is strange is, you and I are of the generation, during our time when we were in teenagers, the first calculators came and the first computer game came out. Mm -hmm. There was no killing in them, but they were very fun to play. And now, every game you pick up, it has to be destroyed, you have to kill, or you have to jump, or you have to turn something around to be damaged, that mm -hmm you psychologically geared up into killing. If you go back to Disney channels, if you remember, Tom and Jerry and the rest, that was a philosophy of Disney, nobody get killed in any of his cartoons. The, the whole thing has changed by killing, because people, when they get you in the cycle of killing, when you grow up, you still go, but I have shot so many people in a computer game, now I do it real. What are you going to get? People going into school shooting children or becoming a bunch of youngsters, we see other places killing others. It's, it's a way in past 10 years, killing has become fashionable for those who want to make money out of it. It was in our time. In our time, these kind of things was shown away. I remember when my, first, my oldest son, till he was two years, two and a half years, there was no gun on the, in the house. But he wanted to have a gun, because everybody else had. I made sure he doesn't get a gun, till he was two and a half. And when I got him the gun, it was one minute in the sun, but I said, oh, no, I don't enjoy it. It's how we are brought up to accept. In a way, let me explain to you why we use guns, and these toys is because it shows the weakness of the child. It has to destroy for him to be somebody. If he understands that the principle of shooting is wrong, that you don't need to destroy to exist, you can give life to exist a better life, it'll be totally different. You don't need to get points to be good. Maybe we close the session, we are in our 40 minutes or so for today. Yes, for sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Kesh. That Thank was you uh, a great, great, great session. Thank yes, you very we much. have the Please. Knowledge Seekers uh, workshop coming up next. If you wake up, we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Good.
Yes, tomorrow well, we have man. surprises here. Oh, yes. Great, <laughs> great. Bye. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, bye thank bye. you Kevin, as thank well. You, thank you, Eric. Thank you, Vince. Bye-bye. Okay. okay, bye for thank now. Thank you, Mr. Keche. Thank you, Rick, Vince. Everybody. Okay, bye for now.